So before we jump in identifying problems and coming up with solutions, I thought we should take a moment to kind of uh, revisit the context within which some of these uh, uh, technologies that will be developed, the solutions that will be developed will be uh, will find resonance with. Uh, Vice Chancellor Economou has already stressed some of these points with the perspective of someone in the trenches. And uh, I thought <clears throat> that uh, the uh, best way to actually bring it into focus, I borrowed the title from, uh, uh, from Gab Gabriel Garcia Marquez's uh, novel, Love in the Times of Cholera. And those of you who have read it, the main protagonist, Florentino, tells his beloved, says, love becomes greater and nobler in a time of great difficulty of calamity. That is cholera. And it's something very similar that is happening with the healthcare system today. It is undergoing societal, financial, legislative changes that are quite extraordinary, putting a lot of strain on the system. And uh, what, what are some of the drivers? We, 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 bear, uh, we are aware of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, it is a uh, humane uh, legislation that has uh, embraced a lot of uh, vulnerable people who were denied care. Uh, with that, however, come a whole series of questions is how do we now provide care for a large number of people with multiple complex uh, conditions? Uh, how do we reach them in places and provide them high quality care in places that are uh, have been previously inaccessible. And the interesting thing is the, the numerator has uh, actually increased dramatically while the denominator, which is the care providers, has stayed the same. As uh, Dr. Kamal pointed out, he and I, we come from a generation where there was fee for service. You were paid for every procedure you did. And even if you did it wrong, you still got paid to do it again. Now that has changed before our eyes. We have kind of gotten into the bundle, uh, uh, bundle fee era where you are given a sum, the hospital is given a sum, and, and that's it, you deal with it, and, and, and that money is spread out. So all the risk taking has now moved to the healthcare system, and uh, there is very little margin for error. This is from 2011, 17.6% of our GDP was being spent on healthcare, and the project forward by 2020, 2025, one fourth of our GDP will be spent on healthcare. That is extraordinary. That would put us in kind of the junk bond status uh, uh, region. More importantly, 40 years ago, education and healthcare had equal kind of you know a, a percentage uh, spending in terms of GDP, and healthcare has far outstripped it. It's a galloping horse that has to be reined in. Hospitals, this is our uh, uh, UCLA medical center. They are like Rolls Royces. They're extraordinarily expensive to maintain. And increasingly, because of this uh, bundled uh, payments, the focus of these healthcare systems is how do we push the uh, provision of care in the more uh, economical, you know, patient-centric in their own environment. And so those kind of... Uh, white elephants will not be built, or less and less will be built in the future. There has also been the number of medical schools in nursing schools have largely stayed constant, while the number of patients has stayed, and the demands have changed so dramatically. So there has been a downshifting of care that is happening right now from specialists to journalists and eventually to primary care workers. And so, uh, that is also rapidly evolving. At the same time, uh, we have also uh, kind of, we are becomingly, we are becoming increasingly aware that there is this shared humanity that, that connects us to people all over the world. And uh, as the Ebola virus brought it, it there is a certain self-interest also that nothing stays within boundaries. Everything, every disease, every pandemic, every epidemic has global implications. And places, the universities, particularly places like UCLA, they have a mission to improve the health of the community. So increasingly, they are being asked to do more 
in terms of global health. Uh, we have this explosion of proteomics, genomics, metabolomics, and, and all that is also raising expectations, not to mention the technologies. People are expecting more and more and more of the medical system. And then, of course, there is the P5 system that derives from Leroy Hood's uh, definition of uh, P4, which is that healthcare no longer be reactive the way we have done it in the past, but it be personalized, it be predictive, it be preventive, the emphasis on prevention, participatory, and more importantly now, are precise. So that means it recognizes the individual heterogeneity of the human uh, condition. So what are the expectations? Obviously, the expectation is that healthcare, the mHealth technologies that we will develop will take away the cost from the system and render the uh, healthcare uh, system more efficient. Now this is very paradoxical because one of the biggest drivers of the galloping healthcare costs is really technology. You know, 40, 50 percent, it keeps increasing. The more technology you invent, uh, I've yet to see technology that is, uh, that takes cost away from the system. So this is something that we need to keep in mind as we come up with, with solutions, uh, mHealth solutions. This is the conventional way and this old 20th century model, and I say old, though it's just a, a, a decade old, has to be replaced by uh, something that uh, Milani and others have suggested that is a kind of a integrated care model, which involves uh, not just the uh, uh, physician care providers, the nurses, the dietitians, the social workers. So it's a very comprehensive model. And, and most uh, importantly, as you see, in their model, they, there's a lot of emphasis on technology, particularly mobile health technology. This is no longer sustainable, as will be a theme on all days of this program. So each of our groups, each of you will be looking at creating a value add for your solutions. Uh, one value add is simply health system enablers, where we help health, uh, health systems come up with systems that will enable better integrated care of the patients, referrals, and so on. But more likely, most of us will be focusing on the patient enabler technologies. Uh, this will be uh, you know, disease-driven. Uh, and uh, I suspect uh, most of the themes and solutions today uh, during this week will focus on this aspect. But I think the biggest value add really will come from the wellness component, where we go upstream and we take all the quantified selves and also that large swath of, of our fellow citizens who don't have access to care and actually focus on the uh, prevention part of the uh, healthcare paradigm. This is kind of the virtual ecosystem that we have created for you uh, during this week and, and beyond. Essentially, we have faculty who will speak to you from the trenches, uh, from the patient care experience. We have sociologists uh, on our team here. We have uh, engineers who will speak to you about sensors and uh, interfaces. We will have uh, uh, preeminent people, uh, data scientists like uh, Manish Srivastava, who work with uh, data storage and data security issues. We will have bioethicists who will speak to us about the ethics of collecting this huge, highly dimensional data on patients and the ramifications. We will have uh, people who are specialists in data analytics, and we'll also talk about design. And, and finally, uh, each of you, you know, there are, uh, there are several of you in the trenches who are uh, care providers. So all in all, this is kind of the uh, innovation ecosystem that uh, we will have constructed for you uh, as you develop these uh, technologies. This is typically the care, uh, Care, healthcare paradigm with M Health, where we have all these different devices picking up biometric uh, data, uh, transferring it to your you know, data acquisition device, mostly a cell phone. Uh, that information is transmitted and then uh, uh, it is merged, and based on those, uh, uh, on the data, either the emergency system or the specialist or even the family and friends are alerted. And, and part of what we do will also will be looking at interventions that will happen hopefully just in time 
and precisely titrated to the needs of the patient. I believe, I believe actually, the biggest impact that mHealth can have is really on behaviors. And we have uh, two of the most uh, uh, preeminent uh, behaviorists uh, with us today, Donna and Lisa, and they will lead the meeting with uh, behaviors. The, the simple fact is that simple things like smoking, uh, you know, overeating, lack of physical activity, they account for a large proportion of our chronic diseases, you know, diabetes, hypertension, and, and so on. And so, so I'm, I'm very excited to, to lead off this uh, uh, institute with a focus on behaviors. The, the other important thing, particularly for me, I, I come from a generation where we would collect data on, on, on sheets of paper, kind of uh, bringing in patients every three months and uh, kind of a very, what uh, one would call a nomothetic approach. And then assuming that that snapshot was representative of that patient and their illness. And it was a artificial construct because we would not go to them in their native environment, but actually force them to come to the medical center to collect the data. And, and, and made all these grand pronouncements about the efficacy of all whatever we are trying to do. The very compelling, uh, the attraction of mHealth and the technologies that you will be working on is it's very ideographic. It will give us information about these patients in their national, uh, natural environments. And, uh, and this is a fundamental game changer. And with that comes a complexity of, uh, of approach and, and also a sophistication that, uh, that our faculty like Susan Murphy and the others uh, possess. So I'm, I'm very excited uh, to uh, be here, be with you, and, and on this common journey of discovery. So to lead off, I, I pose this question to you, uh, borrowing again from Gab Gabriel Gar Garcia Marquez, is can mHealth allow healthcare to be greater and nobler in these times of calamitous change? So I'm excited, I look forward to it, and I will hand it to Wendy. Who will